Welcome to a guide on accounting for bullet drop in Blackout. We'll be expanding on the previous video that went in depth on the ballistics of all long range weapons. You can check that out if you like. By the end of this video, you should know how to use any scope on any long range weapon to judge how far a target is and be able to aim above them accordingly to land an accurate shot, also taking into account whether or not you have an extended barrel. As we covered last time, the suppressor does not affect your bullet velocity or drop, so we don't need to talk about it here. Not only is this topic important for regular gameplay, it's especially important to know if you're hunting a challenge like the Reznov Unlock or True Sniper. I'll go more in depth on True Sniper specifically at the end. To set the stage, if you saw the ballistics video, you would know I arrived at seven distinct categories into which I sorted the weapons based on their average bullet velocities and thereby how much they drop. What I've done for this video is combined the category two and three as well as four and five. The reasoning being they were very, very similar. Only out at that 720 meters did a small difference begin to emerge and we're only going out to 500 meters. They won't be performing differently enough for you to need to learn to aim any differently with them, so there's no point in me getting a Titan just to show you the exact same thing that I'll be showing with the ABR. Better to keep things a little simpler for both our sakes. So these are the five categories. I'll be using one weapon from each category, plus every sniper since they have different scope designs. Just know that one weapon represents all the other weapons in the group. First of all though, before we care about drop, let us look at using the scopes to identify how far away your target is. That is a very important step one. You could try to bring up the map to estimate, but you don't want to try to be doing trig on the fly mid game. You don't have to. All the scopes have built in rangefinders on them, and it turns out they are accurate. They are not just for show. Starting out with the two time scope, which has little boxes you can place your target in. It has one for 200, 300, and 400 meters. And of course, if someone doesn't fit exactly in a box, then you can assume they're somewhere in between. The three time scope has these lines on the left side, so you just want to fit the person between those and the main crosshair. Same philosophy as the boxes. And the three times includes a line for 500 meters, which makes sense since you can't even see someone at 500 meters with the two time scope, but you can with the three. And then the four time scope also has boxes from two out to 500 meters, self explanatory there. So here's a summary of all three, as well as how big the scopes are relative to each other. You can see the boxes on the four time scope are exactly twice as large as they are on the two time scope because of the extra zoom. Very cool. Moving on to the sniper scopes, there are four unique types of sniper scope, despite it only being one item in the game. This is what it looks like on the SDM, as well as all of the tactical rifles. The swordfish, auger, and ABR can all equip the sniper scope, and it'll look like this. It has boxes from 300 to 500 meters, ditching the 200 meter box, since you assumably don't need to account for any drop at 200 meters with the SDM. We'll see about that. Then there's the Koshka scope, which is many people's least favorite. It does block a lot of your screen, but it does have my favorite rangefinder, a curved line ranging from 250 to 500 meters that can make it easier to tell how far someone is if they're not right at a round number. Now for the final two, we have the Outlaw Scope, which is the only outlier. It has two sets of three boxes at the bottom and right, but they aren't labeled. From checking in game, as well as comparing it to the other snipers, since they have the same magnification, so I dragged the Outlaw boxes over to the Koshka Scope actually, it looks like these are set at 350, 500, and 650 meters. A bit odd but at least it has a 350 meter range box, that's handy. So if someone is smaller than that box, there's a good chance you're at the range required for a true sniper. Finally, we have the Paladin, quite a hefty scope, takes up almost your entire screen. I feel like this is one of those celestial body comparison videos now. And here's the Paladin scope compared to an even bigger star. Oof, that you feel real insignificant now, huh? The Paladin has boxes on the left side for 300 all the way out to 700 meters. They want you to be hitting some very impressive Paladin shots apparently. Now that you know how far your target is, we can get to drop. It turns out the range finding is accurate, but how about those corresponding mill dots on the scopes? Those can't be accurate all the time because you can put a three time scope on just about everything from an MX-9 to a Paladin and the dots all stay the same. Not to mention adding an extended barrel would change things even on the same gun. So what are the scopes actually calibrated for, if anything? The sniper scopes are designed for the gun, they should be good, right? It turns out, not at all. 
That's a bummer. To plot everything, I fired off some shots with a gun from each category using every scope as well as every sniper so I could use every sniper scope at every range from 100 to 500 meters. Thankfully, getting a headshot gives a different sound than a body shot. All of this revolves around that fact, otherwise I'd have no idea how accurate I was from only getting a regular hit marker. Thank you, Knackle, as always, hanging out there for the several hours of testing. I thought about how best to present the results. I don't think anyone would be able to remember anything if I just went one by one and showed you the clip of how high I aimed to get the headshot with every weapon and every scope, with and without the extended barrel, at every range. That would be several hundred individual clips that all look very similar, but it does give the cleanest view, so I'll try to do a mix of showing those examples for important ones like the Paladin, but I also took screenshots and translated those into a few summary images. The problem with these is that the dots are kind of hard to make out and know exactly where to be aiming, but at the very least, this does a good job at illustrating how the mill dots on the scopes do not line up with where you actually have to aim. I'll include a gallery of all these images in the description if you want to quickly reference any of them. First of all, here are the Category 1 weapons without extended barrel, so this is the slowest we can get with our pool of long-range weapons. But even then, at 100 meters, you don't need to account for any drop. The bullet will go where you're aiming, so that applies to everything faster than it as well. So it makes sense that there's no 100 meter box on any of the scopes, you don't need to adjust your aim. So I started at 200, each dot represents where you should be placing the enemy's head to hit the headshot if that wasn't clear. The corresponding range colors are in the bottom left, and you can see the dots are not lined up with anything on the scope really. If they are, it's coincidental. The 2 time scope is particularly bad at long range, it's very hard to see your target behind the red glow of the delta and the vertical bar and it has a line at the bottom supposedly for 500 meters, but I don't know why when you can't even see a person at 500 meters with the 2 times scope, and it wouldn't be accurate even if you could. You'll notice because of that I did not include a 500 meter dot on the 2 times scope. Then with the extended barrel, things tighten up quite considerably as you'd expect. I don't have much else to say about these, you can pause it or get the images below if you want to look at it longer. Moving to the category 2 and 3 weapons now, not going to be too different, but I had to normalize all the scope sizes, it was getting a little crazy to fit everything on the page. The sniper scope is there because you can use it on the ABR and swordfish, but you can see it's maybe more useful on the SDM. With these weapons at 500 meters you would have to cover up the enemy's head behind that thick bar at the bottom, but at least 400 meters is at the 500 meter line, that happens to work out pretty well. Although this is all irrelevant, I wouldn't recommend sniping with the ABR and especially swordfish. Those dots are only for hitting the first shot of the burst, you can't control where the rest of them go. And now with the extended barrel on, hey, what do you know, the 500 meter line on the sniper actually works at 500 meters. Out of everything, the extended barrel ABR and swordfish with the sniper scope might match up the best with the markings on the scope. Still wasn't perfect, at 400 meters the head was clearly resting above the 400 meter line, but not bad. Again though, who cares, sniping with these weapons is not going to work too well. Category 4 and 5 weapons now, same thing, the sniper scope is there for the auger only this time, and it isn't much better, doesn't line up with anything really. And with the extended barrel, same story, it's tighter, and nothing lines up with much at all. Not easy to remember. On to category 6 weapons, which had all the different sniper scopes to try. They do all have the same magnification power, just different sizes and designs. This is where I'd like to at least show the snipers with their unique scopes. It's a bit easier to see where I'm actually aiming to get the headshot in game than trying to look at overlapping dots. Especially with the extended barrel, it just looks like a clump at the top of the scope. There's not a lot of drop on these weapons, not much of the scope is utilized. It was fairly disappointing to see that even the sniper scopes that are custom designed for only one gun aren't calibrated for that one gun. I can understand it for the three times and the four times, but why not make the outlaw scope actually useful for the outlaw, you know? Moving to category 7, being the paladin all by itself, 
the fastest velocity in the game, and as a result, very little drop to speak of. I just wanted to clarify something here, if anyone was confused. The 2x scope does not have less bullet drop than the others. There's nothing weird going on with it. In fact, I usually lined up the shot with the sniper scope, and then swapped to the 2 times and fired while aiming in the same place to hit the headshot. So the scopes are not changing anything there. The dots are closer together because of the low zoom. But then you might say, why does it look so different compared to the three times? The three times looks a lot more like the four times. That's because of the physical size of the three times scope being so small. I didn't have to shrink it down much when I made them all the same size. You can kind of see that in how thick the outer circle of the scope is. Anyway, that was the base paladin. And finally, the extended barrel. You don't have to aim very high with an extended paladin. The 500 meter dot on the sniper scope is only on that first line. I'll absolutely be showing all the examples of these shots so you can see where each one was. The Paladin is your best bet for true sniper, hitting a clean Paladin headshot. If nothing else from this video, I'd recommend learning the Paladin. Same thing with this sniper scope not meaning anything though, even though it was custom made for the Paladin, the markings on it mean very little. My only thought is that maybe these were correct at some point in development, whenever some art team was assigned to make them, but the bullet velocities were tuned over time before release, and they didn't go back to readjust the scopes. But that might be too generous of an assumption, maybe it was never accurate. Looking at how far apart they are, and that 500 meter mark on the 2 time scope, who knows. That is everything I have to show when it comes to aiming with all the scopes, weapons, and ranges. Now I will speak a little more about True Sniper specifically, the 15 350 meter sniper kills. I always see people asking about it. Keep in mind, this is not a challenge I have gone for, nor do I have any interest in ever going for it. I wouldn't say the hardest part about True Sniper is hitting the shot, it's getting the opportunity to hit the shot where you found a paladin, or maybe a Koshka or outlaw, and the circle is still in a place where you're able to set up in a long range spot, like construction, in the desert, on a factory tower, on a turbine, on the lighthouse looking across the water, and then you get lucky enough to have someone cross your line of sight who is far enough away, maybe even luckier to have them stand still for a moment. The only bits of advice I have to try to remedy those problems is number one, taking advantage of limited time modes. Ambush was great for this, the sniper's only mode. That makes the issue of finding the sniper in the first place a million times easier. And it also meant other people might also be trying to keep their distance, except for all the people driving around knifing. But the ease of finding snipers alone is enough to make Ambush a fantastic choice. And you'll get much more practice with them as well. So hope that Ambush comes back around someday. The hardcore blackout mode right now isn't bad. It doesn't lower health, but it does remove armor at least. Certainly makes the SDM more viable and reduces the need for headshots. And maybe the style of the mode encourages people to be more campy. If you find someone sitting still behind a tree, that's a lot easier to hit than someone jump sliding around like crazy. But without it being Ambush, finding the sniper in the first place goes back to being real tough. The only other way I can think of that you can try to create the situation where you can line up a shot would be to pay close attention to care packages, always thinking about if one is dropping somewhere you can view from 350 meters away. This is where map range estimation comes back into play, knowing each square is 500 by 500 meters. If there's a care package landing, you can imagine a 350 meter radius around that and try to set yourself up to watch over it and hope that someone comes to loot it, and hope they're not very good at it, so maybe they stand still while looting it, giving you time to line up the shot. Or you can try to follow them around from afar, wait for them to sit still behind something, never know what people will do. Tons of luck required for this challenge, as well as a good deal of skill and knowledge. Hopefully the sniper ballistics portion of this video was able to help with that part, and if ambush returns, that should help a good deal with the luck part. If you're going for this challenge, I salute you, best of luck. If you've completed it, well done, that's very impressive. That's all I have to say about True Sniper and about ballistics. I can finally retire this topic. Hope it was interesting. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.